In this video, we are going to see how we can add authentication to a Flask app using different providers. We are going to create a fully functional Flask auth app and we'll see how authentication can be incorporated in your existing Flask app by creating certain endpoints. We'll see how login with GitHub works. We'll see how login with Google works. And even if you want your users to log in through another service, I'll show you how that is done. So let's move on to a computer screen and let's get started. So as you can see, I'm in my Linode account and I'll get started by creating a Linode if you want to follow along with this video and you want to do what I'm doing in this video, you can grab the link in the description and sign up on cloud.linode.com. This will give you $100 60 day credit and it is great for trying out these apps. So go to the description, grab the link and sign up on Linode. And yes, then you can follow along. So I'll click on create Linode and I'm going to create a machine to host my Flask app because we definitely need a server backend if we want to create an auth app. So I'm going to choose a location which is near me and I'm going to use Ubuntu 24.01 LTS. Let's go for dedicated 8 GBs. And then I'm going to label this Linode as Auth Flask app and you can give any label of your choice. So the thing is, if you have a lot of VPS running in your account, you know which VPS is which. And let's add some tags. So let's select a root password and then we'll simply create this Linode. So let's click create Linode and I'll wait for this to provision. So now I've created this folder Flask auth app Linode and let's open this folder in VS code and I'm going to create a bare minimum Flask app structure. So I'll say main.py, there is a file called main.py. Then we'll create a folder called static and let me call it static and then templates. This is bare minimum Flask app. Let's go to Flask documentation and I'm going to grab the minimal flask app. So let's copy this minimal application and let's try to run it. So let's copy this minimal application and I'll say app.run debug is equal to true. And if I run this application, you'll see that the development server is running. If you don't have Python installed, make sure that you have Python installed and also make sure that you have flask installed. So in order to install flask, you'll have to run a command like this pip install flask and this is going to install flask on your machine i hope that you'll do this so let's have a look at our app it says hello world which is great so let's now host our app to our akamai account so i'll search for filezilla and i'll upload all the files in filezilla and before that what i'll do is i will go to my terminal and i will log into my akamai vps so let's copy this and let me paste this here. Yes, I'm logged into my machine and I'm going to upload all the files. I can simply drag and drop. So let's upload these files. But before that, I'll have to log into my filezilla. So let's copy the IP address, which will be the host, then username root. And then port will be 22. And let's click on quick connect. Okay, and yes, I have them connected. So let's go to slash home. And I'm going to create a folder here called Flask app. So create a directory Flask app. And inside the Flask app, I'm going to upload all these files. So let's upload these files. I'll wait for this upload to finish. Now let's go to CD slash home and then CD Flask app. And then let's run Python three main dot py and it says no module name flask. So pip three install flask and it says app install Python three pip is something that I need to run. No worries. I'll install it and I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And once it's finished, I'm going to run Python three main dot py to start my flask app. It's taking a bit of time, but let's wait for it. So I'm running apt install python3 flask to install flask. And then I'll also install requests by typing apt install python3 requests. And now let's run this python3 main.py and the server is working. I will change this to 0 0.0.0.0 5000 5000 so that we can access it. So I'll say host is equal to 0.0.0.0. .0. .0. .0 and debug is equal to true and let's now run main.py so i'll say python3 main.py and yeah this is working now what i want to do here is i want to create an auth page 
And then I want to be able to click on login and sign up and provide options to user for logging in and signing into my app. So I'm going to uh, import render template. So uh, from Flask import Flask and render template and we are going to render template and let's say uh, index.html and I'll create this template index.html and let's get started by creating this index.html login via github and google and maybe using uh, username and password as well so i'll have two buttons here login via google and then i'll have another button here which will be login via github and we'll figure out how these buttons will be uh, made working okay I'll also add a CSS. So I'll say style.css and let's link this style sheet style.css. Great. So we have two buttons. We have styles and let's add a container and then we are going to add some very basic styles. This is not a styling tutorial. So don't expect a lot with the styles. But again, we are going to give uh, some basic styles. Okay. All right, so we have a max width, say, ADVW, ADVW, uh, and let's do margin auto, 45 pixels auto. And let me see how this app looks now. Okay, so we have login via Google, login via GitHub, and I'll also have to give size to my container. So let me add height to my container, 30VH. And if I refresh, nothing happens. Let me check what's wrong. Did I even add CSS to this page? I think CSS is added. Oh, so, it's, so it says style.css is not there. Uh, let's add slash static slash style.css and yeah, this should be working. So we have two buttons. You can style these buttons. Login via Google, login via GitHub. The moment you click login via Google, it should be able to log you in via Google. And the moment you click login via GitHub, it should be able to log you in via GitHub. So I'll go to github.com, I'll go to settings and every authentication service has a way for developers to add the authentication via that service. So I'll show you how this works. We'll go to OAuth apps. Let's create a new OAuth app. I'm going to call it Akamai. Akamai. The homepage is going to be localhost for now. So I'll copy this for now. And I don't want to add app description but the callback url is going to be uh, github slash auth slash github okay so i want to make sure that i note down this url somewhere so this is the url that i've given for callback now let's register the application okay so we have a username and we can actually add a client secret as well so client id is this is client id client id is this and then we have client secret. So let's set client secret. Okay. This is client secret. I'll have to generate it. So let's generate it. Let's get a new client secret. Okay. It's asking for password. Let's put the password in and yeah. So this is how my GitHub app is going to work. Okay. Amazing. I'll show you how to actually make it work, but for now, let's update this application so we have generated some tokens and we have updated this application now if you look into the documentation you'll see that all you need to do is you need to make your user visit this url along with these query params so if i develop the url it will look something like this so what i'll do is i'll come back to my index.html template and i'll simply say link so let, let me let me add a link a anchor tag href is equal to https github.com slash log slash oauth slash authorize and then we'll add in the client id and then state is a random string so i'm just giving a random string let me let me give this random string and then what i'll do is i will wrap this around the button and let's see if this works so let's refresh let me see if my app is running so my app is not running i'll have to run it again and now if I reload, it works. So let me click on login via Google. In fact, I should wrap this around login via GitHub and not around Google. So let me make it GitHub. And this one will make Google. But yeah, 
if I click on authorize code with Harry, you'll see that this redirects me to my app slash auth slash GitHub and it gives me a code. Now this code contains information about whether I'm logged in or not. So if you see here, users are redirected back to your site by GitHub and there is something called a code and this code is something that you need to pass back to GitHub as a post request. So you'll have to make a post request to this endpoint along with all this information. And then what you are going to do is get this information in return. So by default, the response takes the following form and you get an access token, you get a scope and then you get a token type. Now, once you have this access token, you can always use a get request HTTPS api.github.com slash user and you can add a bearer authentication token. So in order to save time, what I've done is I have actually completed this app to handle the GitHub login. Let me explain what is happening here. So what happens is an index.html is rendered the moment you go to 127.0.0.1 uh, colon 5000. Now, if you click login via GitHub button, what happens is that you are directed to this URL, which has your client ID, your personal client ID. Now, once you do this, what happens is GitHub asks you to authorize your application. And if you authorize your application, what will happen is it will redirect you to this endpoint slash auth slash github. Why exactly to this endpoint? Because we have given this as the callback URL. Now what happens is we take the code and we take the state, which is a string that we passed. And now what we do is we say if we get a code, what we do is we make a post request to this URL to get the access token. Now we can get the access token if client ID and client secret are correct. And also if the code is correct. Okay. Now what we can do is take this access token and then retrieve the user information. Let me remove this uh, render template. Now what happens is if the user info is correct, we can use this function to get access token. This function is really very simple. This is making a post request to this endpoint with the authorization token and then it is returning the response as JSON. And now once you click login via GitHub, it will ask me to authorize code with Harry app. And then I'm redirected to my uh, application and I can get all the information about me as you can see, which is great. Now in a very similar way, I'm going to add Google login. So I'll search for Google Cloud OAuth consent screen. And then what I'll do is I'll go to this page and I'll go to OAuth consent screen page because this is something that I want. And after that, what I'll do is I'll create an app. So you have to select a project and then you have to create an app. So let's create uh, a project. So I'll simply create a project and I'll name it as Akamai, A-K-A-M-A-I, login, and let's click on create. Now my Akamai login project has been created. And now what I can do is I'll wait for it to finish. And now I'll select this project because I want to work in this project. Now I have this credentials menu. I'll come to this OAuth consent screen. And I'll say this app is external. Then I'll click on create. The app name is going to be Akamai login demo. Or let me call it CWH login app. And this is something that you can call your app and support email. I'm putting as my email authorized domains, which domains are authorized to use this. So let's add the local host colon 5000 as a domain. Let's put in the application homepage as localhost colon 5000. Let me call it localhost colon 5000. And then we can add the developer email and click save and continue. Now I'm going to add or remove scopes. So I'll say that I want to see the email and also I want to get the personal information. I think that's all I need to do. I'll also select the open ID and I'll click on update and save and continue. And then I'm going to add a test user. So I'll add myself as a test user, click on add and then save and continue. And after you are done doing this, you can actually go back to dashboard and then you can create credentials. So we are going to create credentials and we are going to create credentials and then OAuth client ID application type is going to be web application and authorized JavaScript origins. Uh, is going to be localhost colon 5000 and it should not end with a slash. Okay, let me add localhost as well and authorize redirect URIs. So this is going to be slash callback slash Google. Okay, let me note this down so that we have this route configured for Google. 
Okay, let's click on create. And yes, OAuth credentials have been created. Let me copy my client ID and my client secret. So this is my client ID and this is my client secret. Obviously, I'm going to delete this. So it is not going to work for you. But yeah, if you want to try this out, make sure that you create your own credentials. Now let's test this out. I've finished all the code. I'm testing this out. And yeah, this works. So what I've actually done is, let me show you what I've done. I've created an app route slash callback slash Google where what I'm doing is I'm taking all the data and after receiving the data, I am getting the credential from the data. And this credential can be decoded. And uh, since Google Auth uses JWTs by default, what you'll have to do is you can decode this JWT and then see the response. So you'll have to install a library called PyJWT, which I'm using. And it's pretty simple and straightforward. And you can implement this uh, in the tech stack of your choice as you want. Now, what we can do is we can go to our Akamai server and we can update this hosted Flask app there. And once you have updated the app, you will be able to see this app in action in your dashboard. One really important point to be noted is that if you are using a domain or if you are using a server, you'll have to change or add the JavaScript origin as your IP address of the server or the domain that you are using and you should be good to go. Now, in order to make this app working, what I'll do is I'll come to my OAuth home URL and change my OAuth home URL to this one. And then I'll do the same with this as well and I'll update my application. I'll also do the same with Google Cloud. So I'll log into my Google account and I'll come back to OAuth consent screen and I'm going to update the URLs. So I'll edit this app and I'll change the application homepage to this. Let's click save and continue and I will do the same with other URLs as well. I think we should be good now back to dashboard. Now if I click on login via GitHub, you can see that I am able to log in via GitHub and I cannot log in via Google because I'm not using an HTTPS. So you need to add a domain and follow these same steps if you want to sign in with Google. So I hope that this video was helpful and you were able to understand how authentication can be done using Flask. It's really very really straightforward. All the different providers like Google, GitHub, LinkedIn and Twitter have different ways to authenticate users and you just have to dig in the documentation and get the job done in the tech stack of your choice. So I hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much guys for watching this video and I will see you next time.